Okay, I'm Panera, and I'm here with Meerkat, Doncroft, and two new members. Uh, Top Secret, say hello. Hi, people. Hello. And uh, Kay K- Suen, as well. Hello. So, so brand new, brand new volunteers. Just to you know, reiterate once again, we do try to fit in everybody who wants to participate. And you guys have been awesome. Uh, I've noticed uh, viewership and uh, and sub- subscription rates have gone up you know, significantly. So you guys are doing a good job getting the word out there. Keep it up. Um, and we'll get more and more volunteers and, uh, that'll attract more cool people. It's like very Noble amazing War. to see how the Starcraft like community me. has been supporting each other. It really has. The fans have been broadening out and supporting all the different assets. And yeah, it's been really, it's been really cool. We do get the occasional run by troll, but by and large, everyone who shows up is, is having a good time. So mm-hmm. anyway, we're going to, we're going to talk about roaches today. Exciting. <laughs> Anyone got an observation to start? It's off? the most dynamic unit in the game. The okay. most uh, dynamic. I mean, goodness. It's you can burrow it, you can unburrow it, you can upgrade marines. it. You can shut up. You can it can regenerate uh, without a medevac, because it doesn't need help. Yeah, exactly. And um, if you build enough of them, you can kill your opponent. And that's <laughs> them in timely order too. Mm-hmm. Just twelve minute roach yeah, like or... What? Somebody's mic is screwed up. Oh, and they move faster on creep. Forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty neat. Um, one of the key things about uh, the roach that uh, somebody somebody's having some mic issues there. I think it's storming by somebody. So forgive us for the, the windy sound. One of the, the cool things about the roach uh, that I like to focus on is its rapid regeneration. Now, early on in the series, this was back when I was doing just the write ups. Um, somebody had pointed out that maybe all the random spikes and knobbly bits <laughs> might be tumors. And that kind of got me thinking, um, if you are regenerating specifically like, you know, the, the rapid regenerate, um, when they're underground, if, if you're having cell division at that high of a rate, the, the rates of something like cancer and the, the potential for error is significantly higher. So it stands to reason that perhaps, even though in the lore it does say that Zerg can potentially live forever, uh, fighting off that sort of inherent disease that comes with the rapid cell regeneration um, would would present a problem. We should point out that the roach was assimilated into the swarm because of the um, the regeneration of its original strain. I'm trying to look up the original strain. It was some kind of slug. Uh, yeah, the, Zontar the, slug, the acidic Zontar yeah. slug, it had acidic saliva. Although it wouldn't spew it out, it just happened it was to have a slug. Saliva. <clears throat> yep. Yes, it was a slug, um, and and we actually see a lot of use of acid warfare in uh, in well ants. I know. <laughs> There's uh, one example. Any, anything else other than ants? Uh, yeah, what? yeah. Um, beetles, maybe. Yeah, there are some the beetles. Bomber beetle. that, yeah, bombardier beetles. That's I don't, I'm not really sure if it's. An acid, but it is. They use a primer protein and mix the two things together, and it shoots out explosively and rather hot and nasty. So there's a lot of examples of chemical warfare, um, even things like velvet worms. Uh, the Yonicophora, they they spit out like this uh, really sticky, um, silk-like stuff, I guess, and it ensnares the enemy. As soon as it hits uh, water or moisture, it expands and gets all sticky and horrible and awful you know, something some, I've, about the about the acid something i've always been curious about how come these roaches keep the acid inside themselves but when it's on their outside it damages them uh think of a stomach think of hydrochloric acid inside of the stomach uh Ooh. the stomach is specifically made to handle those hydrochloric acids and if it were to get on other parts of the skin it would melt the skin oh, yeah it, point. yeah so basically what what we're probably seeing is uh really high acidity in the stomach region and it's probably shedding its stomach lining because it, it has this rapid regeneration ability. It's probably able to shed its uh, its stomach lining and things like that really rapidly, which is what probably makes it green, it, assuming maybe it's a green kind of stomach lining. Um, and it, that's what makes it so goopy as well, why uh, you know it, w- it would stick to armor or something like that. I, a little correction on what I said earlier. It's actually a mucus. It didn't say saliva per se. I just okay. assumed that. Yeah, so that's, it is, it's, it's excreted by this original um, strain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's um, and what's interesting is it seems that they can can utilize their metabolism so that when they they burrow, 
they uh, this is after, of course, the uh, Braille movement upgrade. Um, they they regen a lot faster. Perhaps it's because they sort of go into a less offensive role and they sort of you know turtle up and start regening more rapidly, so they can um, ultimately perhaps. Rep- they, do, uh, they do regenerate quickly before the upgrade, but after the upgrade, it's even faster than it was before. Yeah, yeah. So it seems so. that they're that they're able to um, manipulate their own um, their own metabolism in order to accomplish this. Uh, the, and the reason why they probably don't do it above ground is because they need to be spending that on things like acid production and um, things like that. So they, they seem to be able to partition things rather nicely. Could they be absorbing something directly out of the soil or whatever mineral they're in? Uh, it's possible, but then... To help them how, regenerate? How, how would you explain that they can regenerate consistently on space platform versus ground? Well, I mean, it's just minerals, isn't it? Well, uh, what uh, elements are found what commonly do in both uh, both metals of sorts and uh, dirt, per se? Like, I guess iron could be, technically. No, yeah, but then they would struggle in an iron-deficient environment, right? I don't think right. that they're necessarily absorbing anything. I think it's more like... Um, <clears throat> uh, you can kind of think of it like there's a frog up up here in Alberta that actually uh, in winter it will go into a dormant mode and it sort of changes its own metabolism and sort of fr- it freezes like it can freeze into basically like a solid chunk of snow. And then the next spring it thaws out and away it goes. It actually lowers its metabolism and keeps only its very core going. Um, so it's, it's sort of entering a, a dormant mode and maybe that's similar to what we see when a roach goes underground they kind of enter this dormant mode which allows for this rapid regen so it's like staying in bed when you have a cold yeah yeah kind of if you want to use that analogy sure um and uh i kind of wanted to touch on actually since we we have talked about their um ability to burrow and things like that and i talked about this in the lurker video as well they are remarkably poorly suited for moving underground Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're covered well, at in least spikes. All, at least most of their spikes are facing uh, in a proper direction as opposed to the lurker. Well, in 99% of the time when you have something that's moving in a restrictive environment, they're going to be moving towards having fewer limbs, fewer things to drag on, and they'll, they'll almost take on a, a worm or a snake-like appearance. There are the odd exception like the sandfish skink, which has really big hands, but they, they use that to help swim through like paddles, right? Um so it's just that when, when, they're, when they're moving underground, their big claws up top, those will be getting, those will be caught on, uh, you know, just about anything uh, from rocks to soil and all that. The, the legs as well with the weird spikes that are on sort of the knee joints. Our lost friend wishes to rejoin us. Oh, yes. Add him. Um, do you uh, think that the uh arm claw giant things that would get in the way could also be used as shovels or are they not uh flexible enough to do that uh you know i don't think they would really serve much purpose with that i mean look at how they're they're built they're sort of flat and blade like really good for for stabbing and slashing but they're not terribly good at moving soil and even then um it's just less efficient to do it that way so there's kind of this inherent contradiction what i do like about about their anatomy as far as being able to bro move is the head actually can go inside somewhat the shell and it forms this like armored case over top of the head capsule Mm -hmm. that's pretty cool i really like that that way they're not getting things in their three eyes they're not getting um garbage going into their rather open mouth uh things like that which that little detail is quite fantastic now in the uh, Wings of Liberty campaign, it was said that the roaches and other Zerg um, burrow by vibrating at a, a hypersonic speed, Yes, I believe, to loosen and move the soil. So I imagine that helps them burrow, I mean, in a sci-fi sense, because it doesn't look like they're built for burrowing, as you pointed out. Well, but, they're, 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 they can burrow. I can see how they could burrow pretty easy. But as far as moving in that restrictive environment, it would create issue. But maybe and, they're uh, using their saliva to, to burn through the uh, soil as they move. That would work, except in cases where, for example, you get maybe an extremely basic soil. Uh, I don't know very much about uh, astro uh, ast- astro- astronomy, rather, uh, as far as what plant compositions are and 
uh, I imagine there's a wide array of of what that that could look like. Astrogeology. <laughs> yeah, astrogeology. It's kind of like astrobiology. It's but a bunch of arm waving at this point. Um, you know, saying, well, there could be life here, and that's what it looks like. Well, no, that's simple arm waving at, at its finest. So I, I really don't think I think it, it wouldn't be a chemical dissolution. That would be a little bit harder to control because if you get, say, a pocket of uh, something that's really prone to, say, acid wear, you could end up, you know, lowering in um, in depth as well. You, you know, they could they could end up having a bit of issue. It's it's not as easy to control as is mechanical digging. So that that is an issue. Also, uh, we already discussed that the acid seems to work on the outside of the roaches as well. So I would imagine that it would cause some damage to the roach as well. True, but often acids will burn out their chemical reactions upon the substance they make first contact with. Yeah. This is pretty true, but I'm just saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I think I think that the odds of them using uh, the chemicals isn't isn't terribly great. I just I just feel that like this design could have been so much sleeker. Like if they got rid of all of those spikes on the back and uh, made it so that these blade-like things, uh, the blade-like appendages that are coming out of the second set of limbs, the, the top appendages, if those could maybe be folded in, that could that could help. Uh, and as far as the limbs go themselves, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with the claw on the tip, but I don't like the claw on the knee. I don't see what purpose that serves. It's It's more cumbersome than it needs to be. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I would go like to discuss... A... Go ahead. Sorry. I was kind of wondering why they have a third eye in the first place. Well, the reasoning behind something like that could be that it's seeing... Uh, it, it, it could create some almost like a binocular, uh, so like overlapping fields of view. And it's there's no written rule that you need two eyes to have binocular vision. I mean, yes, it does mean you have both eyes. So it would almost be like trinocular vision. But they, they work together, overlapping fields of view, to get um, a 3D perspective of their environment, which which would allow them to uh, adequately shoot their acid at, at the right distance. So that, that would be a useful tool when shooting projectiles. Uh, it could also be that the middle eye uh, is using different uh, wavelengths. So it might be seeing in the near infrared or something like that or ultraviolet. But I, I like the idea of the trinocular setup myself. So, so it's not just for show. It's like actually has function supposedly. Yeah, yeah, it could, it could absolutely, it could function. So that's, just, yeah. you know, there is a concept art that I'd like to show okay. actually. And you can stick this into the final video. It, this is a more, earlier version of the roach and it's still got the spikes but you'll see it's it's a bit more similar to what you were referring to it's got smaller spikes on the sides yep yeah yeah if if those spikes could be retracted if you look at that picture it looks almost like there's a muscular kind of uh connection between between the shell and the the horns or excuse me the spikes that come out almost like they could be retracted and then if they were retracted the shell would be pretty smooth and it could kind of course through the soil, but the er, the final game version has much larger spikes on it. The and, way that I'm interpreting this is, if you look at all the spikes, and we're talking um, pretty much all the appendages have that sort of what you're talking about around it. It's almost like the cuticle of your fingernail. Uh, it's a place where this biological material might be just actively excreting keratin or something else. So I think that that it, they might not necessarily be able to be pulled in. But what what you're looking at with that is just simply um, like a membrane that sort of has the organic material growing around this this non-organic well this non-living um, horn, right? Yeah. So it, it'd be similar to like. Um, well, think about like uh, your gums right around your teeth, right? It could be similar to something like that. Where I know that teeth do have in the pulp cavity nerves and things like that, but by and large, like you just look at the look at the outside of the tooth, the enamel, and then the dentin, um, you actually end up with uh, the gums serving a similar purpose. I think that's that's more of what's going on. Um, that would make that would make sense to me anyway. That they they just added that little detail, but um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where like. The roach itself is actually really quite mobile once you upgrade it as well. Um, but they're so armored and tough. I mean, these things would not be pleasant to <laughs> to take on in the field. I mean, they're they're kind of designed. Um, they've been they've been evolved by the horde, the swarm, to basically be the meat shield, right? 
Yes, that's exactly yeah. what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be a meat shield, absorb uh, firepower when Zerglings just can't last. Yeah, yeah. So they and they also, um, I mean, it's kind of like the, the role of the Ultralisk, but the Ultralisk ultimately does it better. It's just that it's a sort of a cheaper thing for a young fledgling layer or hive or or hatchery that they can they can make them and <laughs> be on the defensive, which is something we discussed in the Zerg Ecology episode as well. The roach is sort of the linchpin and all of that, the key, the keystone of that ability to uh, to fend off early aggression and ultimately expand the hive. At least that's my interpretation of it. Okay. Does anyone else have any observations on the roach? Yeah, I, I had one. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of death animations on the roach, and. Uh, Whenever a roach dies, gets chopped up or blown up, uh, you never really see the acid come out. I was wondering, do they just rapidly produce it and then shoot it out, or is it in there in, like, a tank or, like, stomach or something? They probably have a limited supply on hand at all times, because think about it, if they're using it for other purposes, like digesting and things like that, um, it would make sense. And ultimately, they could be also using it, like, let's say they have a damaged limb, they could be using that acid to break down parts of the damaged limb so that they can ultimately regenerate faster. Hmm. So like, so they don't get something like scar tissue. I know that some animals don't make scar tissue like um, amphibians. One reason why they're so good, salamanders in particular, well, they, they don't a, scar tissue. Anyway. It is a mucus. It is a mucus, and mucus is secreted like, hmm. constantly. So... Considering how rapidly they can regenerate, they can probably also rapidly secrete. So I'd imagine that it's not – the majority of it is not stored but is constantly manufactured. Yeah, that absolutely. That's my theory. And it, it makes a lot of sense as well, um, especially like when they burrow. They're, re, they're retooling their metabolism to go into that sort of regenerative phase, whereas when they're above ground, they're in, they're in sort of produce a whole bunch of this acidic mucus phase. Which makes a lot of sense because both would k- take a considerable amount of metabolic resources just to accomplish. So I'm just looking at pictures right now of of roaches gawking. Quite yeah, that, that's a lot of mucus for something that's spontaneously generated, though. Uh, I think that a lot of it it doesn't take a lot of acid in order to be to be quite nasty. I mean, anything any acid with a really low pH is going to do it, um, do the trick. And I think I think what it is is they're producing limited amounts of acid, right? But the green goopiness is actually like organic tissue from the roach itself, like the stomach oh, lining and things like that. So it's so gross. It, it really is. Like it's something that you would not want to that you'd not want to encounter and I think Banelings do a pretty decent job of this as well. Um, they I mean, their whole insides are basically, like, there's no going back from once you're a bangling. I mean, all of your organs and stuff are, are likely in that sort of slurry of organic acid garbage. To keep them away from your dog, your house, your family. Your grandma, <laughs> yeah. Don't invite them out for dinner. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> just don't. <laughs> yeah, don't do roaches. Ro- yeah, roaches, um, they're certainly, like, as far as Wings of Liberty is concerned, I think they're one of the nastier additions to the Zerg arsenal. Um, along with probably infestors, like the thing with the Zerg is they seem to be trending towards chemical warfare a little bit more and more with each passing generation. Like look at uh, the Devourer when it was added in, that was absolutely lovely. <laughs> you get that acid that just sticks to your ships, right? And then now they've added uh, the Roach, they've added the Infestor, which of course has the uh, the fungus. So they really are. They, it seems that they've sort of clued in to the fact that, you know, okay, all we need to do is puncture the hull or uh, the plating of Terran armor, and they can't stand up to zero gravity env- or uh, zero oxygen environments. And the Protoss, I mean, all you need to do is, is you know, get some acid on their face and it's game over, right? So, right. So I think that they're really cluing into that whole concept of, okay, we don't need to necessarily mechanically be like the Ultralisk, right? We don't need to necessarily have everything tear apart their prey. We can actually just spray them with acid and be on our way. Right. Which, exactly. Yeah. They don't yeah. need to eat them. They're not like a predator. They're just a killer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, after a battle, Roach probably could eat some of the material, the organic material. Uh, why bother if it can regenerate that fast? Well, it needs it needs the raw material somewhere from somewhere, right? So. Right. 
I like, still argue it gets it from the creep. That's how I've always felt it. That's that's and exactly. from the minerals and the gas and yeah. Well, that's from the lore. The lore explicitly does state that they get the they get their nutrients from the creep somehow. And for anyone who watches Anatomy of Starcraft regularly, you know that that pisses me off because <laughs> it's it's a cop out. It's absolutely a cop out. And so they are feeding on the creep um somehow we don't know how um but that that doesn't mean that that's the their exclusive way of obtaining energy right think about a zergling off scouting uh many many miles uh, or kilometers from from the base i mean if it can catch something and eat it why wouldn't it also zerglings have a really high metabolism and well you would assume so based on how fast they move so they must have to eat a lot that's why they need that metabolic boost. Exactly, exactly. So I think that there is, uh, like, it, it makes sense. Like, if you're a roach who's spitting out acid and, like, stomach lining and all of this garbage, right, after a battle, why wouldn't you go and eat the, bio, like, the biological <laughs> slurry that is the result of, like, melting a protoss, right? Why would you? Like a smoothie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just stick your straw in there and away you go. Just ask the, overlord, ask the overlord permission first. Yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> Well, spiders do this, right? They, they're venomous. They might want to infest them or whatever. Oh, yeah. they're dead. They can't infest them. Yeah. Well, spiders and snakes actually do this. Uh, spiders in particular are fantastic at this. Uh, once they bite, their venom actually starts the preliminary stages of digestion so that they can, they, they don't mechanically do a lot of eating. They actually stick their chlycerae in and suck things up like their straw, like, uh, the organic slurry that's created from their, uh, venom. So uh, you can imagine this is a similar, a similar thing. I mean, they're creating a, a tremendous amount of this usable organic slurry from spitting acid all over a Terran, for example. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they eat that? New unit, Legacy of the Void. The Zerg spider like, gets on its enemies and sucks their insides out. Well, there are leaving a, a hollow <laughs> shell that the other Zerg can eat and regenerate health with. Well, one of one of the things that uh, you can actually think about it like uh, that would that would be a really cool idea, uh, and I think that they should do something like that. Like for example, the um, the Bellistomatids, and I'm pulling up a video, or not a, a video, but a picture for you guys. Because we want to kill the Blizzard animators with work. Yes, we do. We absolutely do. Okay, uh, I'm going to link you this, and we'll put this up in the um, in the video as well, so that you guys can all see. And I'm, we're just making extra work for, yeah, making extra work for um, for the river uh, for the river um, <laughs> for the river that's for the true. river. Um, anyway, so there's a picture. So that's a, uh, commonly known that's a, as a, a water bug, right? They're a hemipteran, so they come from a lineage of, of creatures that suck a lot of juices out of plants. Things like aphids and stuff are relatives. Don't but they these do guys, it frogs, too? Uh, these guys absolutely do. Uh, these guys, they grab them with these, those big raptorial claws on the front, and then they, they have this little straw on the end of their face, which they then suck the juices out of a living thing. Wow, that's horrific. <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad I'm not a frog. Yeah, no. It's a vampire. <laughs> vampire. New, new unit idea for Blizzard. Everybody email them and let them know that uh, we want a Bellistomatid as uh, a new unit. And yeah. tell them to watch Anatomy of Starcraft so they learn how to design things. Hey, you know, hey, you know what? I've invited. I wrote an open an open letter to Blizzard that anybody from their company that wants to come on, be it a moderator on the forums or Dustin Browder himself, they're more than welcome to come on the show and talk about, I'd love to have it because I'd like to hear some of the insight, some of the process that goes through, okay, well, we have the concept for something like a roach. How do we take that and flesh that out? And what's the process behind it? And maybe we can actually help them with their process and say, and, and they, they can ultimately make, you know, cool things without adding random spikes and have them be functional yet awesome, you know? So, yeah. anyway, I think we're at about time here, and we've had a great okay. nerd out. So, um, I would like to uh, just plug my my interview show. We do need questions for Potato List coming up. Uh, so, if you have any questions for Potato List or any of your other favorite personalities, please leave them leave them in the comment section below. Yeah, we'll probably do one for Doncroft because he's been on enough as well. Um, this is true. Aww. Yeah, you're you're one of our favorites. So, uh, and sorry to that guy that got dropped during this. Oh, oh yeah yeah we'll get him guy. on that guy we'll get him on another episode don't you guys worry uh and i'll talk to him right after the call here but uh, anyway make sure to uh and I'm, I'm gonna be that guy again make sure to tell all of your friends your grandmother your dog your cat everybody if you like if you like this show and let's say you're at a bar craft 
in between matches, bust out some Anatomy of StarCraft. I swear the nerds will love you for it, and you will be the most popular nerd there. And the one girl that's there, she'll throw herself at you because you're so the yeah. One girl that's there just might. She will. She will, and I promise you, she'll be good looking. She absolutely will be, and it'll be perfect. It'll be. So do it. Okay. Just do it. <laughs> Just yeah, do it. Bust it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Bust it out at graduations or and y- grandmother's birthday. You know anything. Or join the show and you can be like, hey, I was on Anatomy of Starcraft one time. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You can even – this is I'm even – famous. Great. Yeah, you're famous. <laughs> yeah. You, can even, you can even bust this out on a, at a funeral, you know? There is no <laughs> limits to the, to the versatility <laughs> of this of – this. Let's quite laugh. Oh, my God. <laughs> If you ever are at like a ritual group suicide, that you could do. Uh, I mean, like let's say, let's say you're visiting, you know, somebody in the hospital who has a horrible, horrible disease. What better way to cheer them up from their, you know, adenosarcoma than to show them, hey, roaches get cancer too. Don't do it at a funeral, guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, well, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs>